I was born in 1949, so I'm 17, getting to 71, and uh, I come from B.A. Tala, but uh, I would like you to know that I, I did not grow up completely in Mumlang. I grew up in Miso, and uh, only got to Mumlang to complete my standard six and to get to JMBC. Uh, right away, I can't tell you exactly, but uh, I want to tell you that uh, I started school normally. When I say normally, it means that uh, when we were growing up, you had to send your hand above your head to touch the ear so that they know that you are ripe enough to go to primary school. But then I went a bit earlier because uh, my father, who is of late, was a nurse and um, he was one of the very literate people in Gumlan. So, when I was born in Warwa, Warwa is now part of Nigeria during the plebiscite, Northern Cameroon decided to join the Nigerian Federation. And that's where my father was working as a nurse. And then when he was transferred, to Victoria at the time, which is called Nalimbe. That is where I went to school in Limbe. And later on, I started, uh, continued in the Presbyterian uh, Primary School in Kumbu. And then completed my Standard 6 in CBC School, Wowo, in New Subdivision. Uh, at my age, uh, that young, and being of uh, a very little father, I want to let you know that, first of all, he was, he was a teacher before becoming a nurse. And one of the greatest things that he ever wished for his children was that we go to school. And that's why uh, all of us, my father's children, my mother's children, we all went to school and uh, I think uh, we are all doing well right now. It was a bit different. The only problem at the time was that uh, there were not many schools as found now. Uh, for instance, uh, when I left Kumbu and came to Mumlang, we were staying in SOP and uh, I had to leave SOP and go to school in Wowo so that uh, I, I think that, this, that distance is about, uh, uh, it should be about some 30 kilometers from SOP to Wowo because from SOP we have to go to climb up to Simbo. From Tumbo, you go to, you know, you take the short cases, cases, then you get to Sen, from Sen before you get to Wowo. So I had to go there, stay there the whole week till Friday, and then the weekends before I get back to SOP. So that was the distance we, we had to cover in order to go to school. <laughs> The attitude of my parents was all that he, he knew that he, all he wanted for his children is to get to be educated. See? And so 
from time to time, for instance, like me, when I came back from school, they would have to look at my my books, look at my exercises, find out whether I had some homework to do, and then he would look at them and then ask me to do, and he would correct me. And then the next time, he would tell me, encourage me, or oh, tell me where I went wrong if I went to school. In my case, I am the first in my family. And we are three boys and two girls. Uh, there was no influence apart from that urge of educating all these children. Then um, that urge made him to sort of regret a bit because he fell sick too early. Because um, later on he was working in BBH and then fell sick. And uh, BBH declared that uh, the, they could not cure him. And so he had to go for little treatment. And that is how I found myself now trying to fend for a living and for my education. Uh, about education, what was the general attitude towards education back then, general? Oh, education then was, uh, was actually meant for people who were determined because education was not, uh, was not a given. Schools were rare and in between villages you had to go distances to go to school. For instance, uh, let me just say, my father had to leave in the land and take by foot and he went and completed his senior primary education in Bengui at the time. And that is how most of the people at this time had to go all of those distances. And then for, his, for their children, we had to be, go to schools and I don't know whether uh, every subdivision even has schools. Look like SOP. You have to leave SOP. When I say SOP, it means that those from Taba, SOP, uh, Borong, all that, if the, the next school where you had to go was in the works or in Duke. So you have to be determined to go to school. You have to be encouraged to go to school. Because it meant a lot of sacrifice to have a man, to have an education. No, all of us went to school. All of us. Uh, my father had uh, two girls we have now. All of us went to school. My immediate follower is a girl went to St. Augustine. And then her follower too went to Bilen Yaoundé. She was the only candidate who succeeded from Bengi, where she was living with me when I was working in Bengi, and scholarship to come to Yaoundé, so that uh, she completed from there, and later on was a treasury worker, and now she's retired. Uh, Okay, I think that uh, at our time it was very, very interesting. For me, when, we, when I left, let me talk about the last year, that is 2006, when I was already in Bumlam. We came to school and we would go and we would have to look for homes that could accommodate us from Monday to Friday. When it is Friday, you are feeling so happy because you will now go back home. For me, on Friday, I would leave home, go through 
get down to Mangu, get down to, I don't know what this village is called again, cross the river called Sir, climb the hills, and then get into a palm bush, just near up, and I will search some firewood for my parents, that's the bamboos. Okay. Get up to the compound and shop. I will drop it. That's Friday. Saturday, I will be doing some work, farm work. And then, Saturday evening, I will go down to Mo and uh, buy some cassava. Bring it up in my morning. Sunday in the morning, she will get the cassava cooked. We will go to church, and one of us will remain to look at the what the hive goes. And by the time we come down from church, the cassava is ready. I will take it on my head. Get up in Tumbo, sell hot cassava, get some money. If I don't sell all of it, I will continue right to three corners, sell it, then come back through a road called Kuwa and then get to sell past the night. Very early in the morning, I leave for school. And when I reach, I now have to pass the other days in Wawa until it is Friday again, then we will continue. That was the circle. That is how I did my standard six in Wawa. I think we are the last batch to have done the standard six in 1964. After that, it was uh, uh, classes, class.